Good morning. Good morning. It is really close to seven o'clock and I have a cup of coffee and I have a swing behind me and I have lilacs. Check that out. Lilacs. Lilacs make me very happy. I'm just going to move that back a smidge. Trying to find the right angle sometimes is just really difficult. So yes, good morning. Good morning. We are glad that you are here this morning. Yes, good morning. Good morning, Brenda and Rick and Marlene and Lynn. So glad to see you this morning. And Karen, good morning. Good morning, Rob. So glad to see you. And good morning, Greg. Good morning, I hope you all have some coffee. Good morning, Ellen and Jeremiah. Good morning, Brenda and Jill. We're glad that you're with us this morning. And Tanya, any guesses to where I might be? Good morning, Shelly. Glad to see you awake this morning. Any ideas of where I might be? Uh, yep, I am outside and I'm not in my car today. Good morning, Sandy. Yes, good morning, Lori. Uh, I, I walked into this backyard this morning and I was like, oh, this is like a little secret garden. There's a pine tree and there's lilacs and there's a maple tree. So lovely, so lovely. Good morning, Leah. Oh, so nice to have you here this morning. Yes, good morning. Good morning, Al. Good morning. And one of my favorite parts is that there's a swing behind me. So nice, so nice. Any thoughts of where I might be? Maybe I'll do a wee bit of a, uh, goes that way. And good morning, Michelle. I hope work went well yesterday. And that way, and any thoughts of where I might be? <laughs> Glad I'm not in my kayak. Oh, I didn't get to go yesterday. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get to go today. That's all right. There's other means of being active. Good morning, Elizabeth. We are so glad that you're here this morning. All right. I am uh, <laughs> opening up my Bible, so I hope you have your Bible as well. Uh, we, any other guests where we might be? Oh, good. I'm glad that you had a good day yesterday. Good morning, Joyce. Uh, good morning, Paul and Sue. Any ideas of where we might be? Anyone? Anyone? All right. Okay. I'll just let you think about it as I take a sip of coffee. Mm. I really enjoy those first few sips of coffee in the morning. It just, they feel so good going in. All right. I'll let you continue to think about where I might be. Anyhow. This week we have been talking about places and uh, the places God calls us to because that was based off of our Sunday sermon and how God calls us to a place and gives provision and gives an identity and purpose and, and parameters in that place. And so Monday we talked about Jesus and uh, how Satan might have, <laughs> I have these flyaways, uh, how Satan tried to tempt him away from the purpose God had called him to. And then uh, Monday we talked, so tempting away from the purpose, Satan does that all the time. Uh, place, Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh. Uh, yesterday we talked about the fact that sometimes when we're in the place that God has called us to, it's gonna be hard. But that doesn't mean that we've sinned or we've done something wrong, it just means that, that it's hard. That's it, but Jesus is always with us. So today, I want to talk about uh, provision in the place God has called us to. All right, so we're going to start in Genesis 12, maybe the end of Genesis 11. One more sip of coffee. All right, starting at the end of 11, 27, it says, This is the count of Terah. Terah became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran became the father of Lot. While his father Terah was still alive, Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans in the land of his birth. Abram and Nahor both married. Uh, 
The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah, and she was the daughter of Haran, and the father of both Milcah and Iscah. Now Sarai was barren, she had no children. Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, son Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, uh, the wife of his son Abram, and together they set out from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Terah lived 205 years and he died in Haran. One of the things that I often think about uh, was, was Terah supposed to keep going? Because it says that he settled. I think sometimes God calls us to places and on the way there, we find something really comfortable and nice and suits our needs. Uh, but uh, it's not actually the final destination. We need, maybe we need to think about that for a minute. Has God called us to a place and in the middle of the journey, something caught our eye? Maybe it was a cute girl or a cute boy. Um, maybe it was a job or a home maybe it was a friend and we sort of just set up camp there but we know that's not the final des destination but we're still sitting there and we can still feel that tugging of our heart um, don't you like it when God does things like this <laughs> and he just like God am I have I reached like that place where you want me to be or have I stalled out somewhere on the journey? Anyways, that's not what I wanted to talk about today, so we'll keep moving. But for some of you, you needed to hear that and you need to get a kick in your butt to, sit, to just encourage you to keep going because there's like, when we get to the place God has called us to, it is, it's good. Okay, chapter 12, that was chapter 11. Uh, the Lord said to Abram, leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. And he goes on and says this, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make you your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all the people on earth will be a blessing, will be blessed through you. So Abraham left as the Lord had told him. And Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai and his nephew Lot, all his possessions they had accumulated and the people they have acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan and they arrived there. Abraham was 75 years old. Now, 75, whether you're in good shape or not so great shape, is still old. And so often we think that we reach certain mile, mile posts in our life and we think, well, I can't possibly do this. Abraham, I mean, uh, God called Abram when he was 75. You wanna know why? Because he knew he'd say yes. So I think the attitude of our heart, we need to check out the attitude of our heart because we can be you know, dragging our butt when we're 25 or we can be dragging our butt when we're 75 thing is God's asking us is are you willing he's looking for someone who's just willing to go uh, also not what I want us to talk about today so God put the call out Abram I want you to go what did Abram do he said yes and Abram believed the Lord and it was credited to him as righteousness is what 15 6 says Genesis 15 6 so God called him to a place and he went and he gave him like all these blessings, right? If you go, all of these things will happen to you. Um, so he was giving him an identity and a purpose. If you wanna, it's interesting, at the beginning of 13, it says that 13 two, it says that Abram, now this is, there had been a famine in the land and so they went down to Egypt. There's a whole story that goes on there. I encourage you to read it and then keep, keep reading. Um, but while they were in Egypt, they actually acquired, had become very wealthy in livestock. So God gives provision for the plan. Like God gives provision. Sorry, there's a whole bunch of birds. <laughs> I know birds, right? Um, when we go to the places that God has called us to, he always, he always provides and he's always faithful. Because as you, as you read through those blessings, he was made into a great nation. Why? Because he went. And his name was made very great. We're told that he actually, 
uh, in chapter, uh, I'm looking for Melchizedek, which is a little bit further, and you're like, who is Melchizedek? Um, maybe it's in 14. These are things that I should read. When he, um, he we're told that he rescued Lot in chapter 14, and uh, there's a big war, and Abram actually, Abram, like 75 plus years, rallies the troops and goes and saves his nephew, all right? <laughs> when God calls us to do something, he's going to see us through no matter like what the circumstances are. So we're told that, so as a result, he, he got this great name. All right. Um, and I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you on earth. And you, and from Abram's line, Jesus comes. All right. Because he said yes to going, right? He had no idea where he was going. Let's flip over to Hebrews. There's something behind me. You never know. You never know what's going to happen on Morning Devos with Jen. Oh my. All right. Flipping, 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 flipping. Hebrews. We're going to Hebrews 11, 8. It says, By faith, Abram, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he is going. He didn't know where he was going, but he obeyed and he went and as a result he was provided for and his purpose was fulfilled he had no idea where he was going when I and I think I've told you this story lots um, when I left my previous church uh, God just said I want you to go I want you to go and I'm like okay and so many people asked like what are you doing where are you going and I'm like I have no idea but I know God has called me I know he loves me I know he has plans and purposes for me and so I just need to say yes because God knows what I need I need a place to eat a place uh, a place over my head and a car and then when I moved to England I said God you know what I need because that's like God got me there and I said I need a, a place I need a nice place to stay I need a good roommate and I need great friends. Wow. Like, and so I, I didn't, I didn't really want to go to England, but God said, yeah, I want you to go and I want you to get this training at LL Ministries because I want you to help people learn how much I love them and bring healing to their hearts. And that's always been part of who I am. I just want people to experience God's love and how he can heal up those sore spots in our hearts and how much he loves us. And so when I went, so obviously that was part of my journey, even though I didn't want to go. Did you hear that? Sometimes there are parts of our journeys that we don't want to go through, but we know that we have to because God calls us and it's going to be good. So when I got to England, wow, gave me such a beautiful room. Yep. Yellow with lots of windows and my roommate, Therese, oh, such a good friend. We did so many things together. And then uh, just a wonderful group of friends who I'm still in contact with today like God provides and then when I came here to Barry like God totally provided so he calls us to a place and in the place he always provides he I want to say I want you to hear me say that he always provides when we are in the place that he has called us to he always provides so I'm, I'm flipping back to Genesis again Genesis here we go. So, Genesis. It says, one of the questions that I have written in my Bible, it says, um, what, <laughs> uh, what is hard or easy? Ooh. What is the hardest thing about start, starting all over again? Right? Because that's often why people don't go to the places God is calling them to do because they're afraid about starting all over again. Maybe it's a maybe it's a new job, maybe it's a new house, maybe it's a new town, maybe it's a new set of friends. But sometimes just those fears overwhelm us, right? Like, well, where am I going to live or or who are we going to hang out with or how are we going to connect with our family or um yeah, like what about our routines? Like what about friends for the kids? Like and the thing is, God knows what we need. When we are in the place that he has called us to, he always provides, always provides, 
always provides because he's that good. I was reciting to myself this morning, and I know we've said this verse so many times, uh, Philippians 4.19, and my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. And often at camp, I would hold out the all so they would get the hint. So I'm gonna try that with you. And I want you to name off, as I'm saying the all, I want you to name off all the provisions that you think you might need. So whether it's just verbal or you type them in. All right, so my God, so you're gonna either type in or speak out all the provision that if God's calling you somewhere, that <clears throat> he is gonna provide. So I'm gonna take a drink first. All right, <clears throat> here we go. So you're, you're thinking about the provisions that you might need. So my God, I gotta get ready. I haven't done this in a while. <clears throat> my God will meet, <sighs> my God will meet all <sighs> your needs all of them like right he can meet all your needs all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus so when we put our faith in Jesus Christ he meets all our needs all of them we just have to say yes I love that passage in, in Hebrews and it said and he went so maybe God's calling you to the grocery store today or maybe God's calling you to the post office or maybe God's calling you to get gas at a different ESO station I don't know Maybe God's calling you to start um, a Bible study. Maybe God is calling you to start a new ministry. Maybe God is calling you to give something away. Maybe God's calling you to let go of those things you've been holding on to because they're holding you back from the place he wants you to be in. I don't know. But what's God calling you? What is that place God's calling you today? Because he is going to provide. He's going to provide. He gives provision in the places he has called us to. All right, my friends, I'm going to pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that you meet all of our needs according to your glorious riches in Christ Jesus. And so when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, we choose to follow him. He meets all of our needs, no matter what those needs are. And so, Father, would you remind us of that today, that that long all, that long all, you meet us, all of our needs. And so when you, when you told Abraham to go, he went even though he did not know where you were calling him to. So thank you, Lord, for your provision. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love and your faithfulness to us. You are a good, good Father. And so, Father, we commit today to you. Help us be sensitive to the leading of your Holy Spirit to go and do the things that you're calling us to go and do and to trust that you're going to provide. And I ask this in your name, food, shelter, and closer to Jesus. All right, may he provide your food, shelter, and draw you closer to Jesus today. All right, my dear friends, any last guesses of where I might be? You guys, that was totally a squirrel. That was totally a squirrel. All right, well, maybe someone like Diane Hunter, when we watch later, when she watches later, she'll know where we are and she'll put it in. I'm going to leave it out there. All right, have a great day. We'll chat later. Bye.